Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ritmix Russian Dota 2 League. We're going to have this uh, best of three getting underway today on this wonderful Friday morning. Yeah. Team Liquid going up against Team Empire. Dying Liquid going to be Empire. on the right side with the first pick. And of course that leaves Empire to the dire with the second. And this best of three is in the winner's bracket I believe. Yeah, it's in the uh, semi-finals. So, whoever loses here still has another chance. They'll be still in the pool. Of course, uh, they will be in the loser's bracket, so they're one closer uh, to being out of the tournament, and whoever wins, one step closer to winning it. Now, we're hoping for a pretty good best of three coming out here. We already got the first ban phase completed here. We got Wisp as well as Nyx being banned out by Liquid. Empire choosing to battle the Lone Druid as well as the Batrider. We get to see Wisp in all of his new recolored back to blue <laughs> glory. And the first pick going the way Team Liquid gonna be the Keeper of the Light. So pretty standard picks and bands thus far. Except for maybe the Lone Druid. We're kind of seeing a, some teams who are starting to ban him out when they don't really want to deal with him. But uh, not necessarily a top tier ban, but the other three in terms of Batrider, Nyx, and the Wisp, almost always getting banned out. Empire now looking for their first two pickups, choosing to take up the Darkseer here, at least for the first one. It's been a little bit more time thinking about where they want to go with the second one. They know they want the AoE, they want the Queen team fight here, as well as a strong laner, and then they end up going with Queen of Pain, so they're going to pick up basically what are going to be their two solos right off the bat here. They get pretty two of the stronger ones in the game. It does leave Magnus in the pool if Liquid want to go that route who is a decent laner of his own accord, but can't really compete super well with Queen of Pain if you were to end up in that mid-roll. We see Puck picking up, picked up here for Team Liquid. Trees are probably going to see him in the mid lane, being handled by Korok, as well as this Nature's Prophet now that's going to get picked up. And typically Liquid do run in the off lane in the hands of Bulba, but I have seen them in the past give it over to Fluffed Stuff, and then he runs that Nietzsche's Prophet just as a jungler and they grab another offlaner for Bubble to play. We'll see if that's uh, what they go. I kind of expect to see him in the offlane in this particular game with the Keeper Light already picked up. Keeper Light, not the real best solo uh, support in a lane. Can't do a ton early on. He doesn't have a disable to uh, really be able to save his carry if it comes to that point. And uh, makes the trilane pretty weak or vulnerable to uh, an aggressive trilane that could come out from Team Empire, especially with that life stealer pick that comes out as their third and final pick in this first picking phase. Life stealer carry that can definitely go very aggressive. Can even we've seen him played solo, I think, more and more as of late, rather than actually focusing on him for the carry. With the way Empire have already drafted this far, though, probably going to see him end up with a trilane around him. Now we'll see what heroes they want to pick up to that extent, but probably looking for just supports Ten in that second picking mm -hmm. phase. Giving Liquid all the information in the world here about what they are running, and uh, just going to let them pan out supports now. Die. Meantime, Team Liquid, they got the two solos. They don't really have their carry yet. They picked up that Heaver Light as a support very early on the first pick, Radiant actually. So banks some of these supports might hurt them a little bit too, but thus far Liquid banning out both Bane and Undying. Those are supports that Empire really Radiant favors. Die. And they can choose now to pick up, leave whoever they want in the pool as their support. And uh, they have first pick coming out of the second ban phase. We're seeing Gyro and Phantom Lancer, the bans from Empire. So it looks like they're just trying to ban out carries that they think can really contest the farm of the life stealer. We'll see what else they want to take out here. For TC, if it's the anti-mage. I was about to say that, but there it goes. Lion. They do take out the anti-mage and immediately Liquid picking up Lion. So that's who they wanted as their secondary support here. Well, we're seeing Lion more and more in the competitive scene, and you know, mixed success. Some games it felt like it feels like he's really strong, and other games it feels like he's maybe just a slightly worse Lena. But he's stun much more reliable, both the hex and the earth spike, easier to land than a light strike array, which does give him something. His ult, of course, with a much longer mm -hmm. cooldown, but does more damage early on in the game, and that's typically when a Five spell like that is the most mm -hmm. relevant. However, Lena can cast hers multiple times in one cooldown of lines. 
Empire now looking for their fourth pick, down to about a minute remaining of their reserve time. They're going to pick up Vletrek as their first support here, so probably looking to see something like Shadow Demon to pair it up with. Kind of surprised that Shadow Demon actually made it through that second ban phase. They chose to ban out Rubik for Team Liquid rather than Shadow Demon. Of course, they had some spells that are pretty good to steal, like the Dream Coil from Puck. And uh, keep her light if you could steal Illuminate, especially the ultimate form of Illuminate, since it always counts that way for Rubik once he's stolen it. Until uh, the duration ends, at least. Remaining. Pretty good spells. Illusory Orb, not bad either. Five if you get Profit Ult, of course, that's pretty great, but not usually the easiest, since Profit typically casts that far out of the fight. And now Liquid looking for their last pickup. We'll see who they want to go with as their carry. They got the Keeper Light and Lion, which can be a pretty aggressive tri lane if they want to run it that way. Depends on who they're going to pick up, if they can farm. I wouldn't be completely surprised to see something like Luna coming out here. But they could also go for something a little bit more split pushy. They already have that Nature's Prophet, so they could pick up something that's a little bit better at sort of a farming race and creep waves. If they wanted to go maybe Alchemist. We've seen Alchemist a lot as a carry as of late. Actually, we've seen Alchemist in a variety of roles as of late, which is uh, moderately surprising, to say the least. But they have some time, and it looks like they are choosing to take full advantage of that to think about what they want here as their carry. And I think Empire's last pick might be a little bit more straightforward. Weaver. They end up going with a Weaver, not one of the heroes I probably would have come up with. Usually when we're seeing Weaver, we're seeing him played kind of in a solo lane. Sort of the way Clinks was played a while ago, uh, typically by Empire in the hands of Funic. Where they kind of picked a an aggressive tri lane to go, and a contest the farm of the enemy carry, and then they had a solo clinks in that safe lane, farming away as their carry, just roaming around ganking as it hit mid game. And now Silence Weaver, pretty uh, survivable, and then we're gonna see Silencer actually as the last pick up here from Empire. Expect to see that as a support, as they typically run him as such. I think one of the few teams that's still actually running Silencer. Everyone wanted to try him out when he was new and cool. And then uh, I think a lot of teams realized that he's a little bit harder to run than they might have initially thought. Global Silence is a good ability, especially if you're trying to force team fights constantly, but his laning phase is just not particularly great. And that makes him a little bit weaker than maybe some other supports. But they're going to pair him up with Lechrek, who is a pretty decent support in his own right. Also has the tower pushing ability from the Edict. We'll see if they actually go for that. I know a lot of teams are starting to favor that lightning and split earth build. It gives a lot more burst magic damage potential. And I'm just going to wait for these players to pick up their heroes and we can get into the game. And there they go. So, go over the players and their heroes very quickly. On the side of Empire, the Dire side, we've got Scandal, taking up the Darkseer, Silent on the Leshrac, Blow Your Brain on the Nakes, Vigos taking up the Queen of Pain, and finally Goblock on the Silencer, complete with stupid Silencer armor. Mm, look at that tall penis helmet. <laughs> Meantime, on Team Liquid, the Radiant, we've got Korok taking up the Puck, TC on the Weaver, IX Mike on the Keeper of the Light, Fluff and Stuff on the Lion, and finally Bulba, gonna be on the Nature's Prophet, and Liquid leaning pretty much exactly how you would have expected them to. Running the defensive trial with Weaver Farming, Keeper of Light, and Lion as sports. Oh sweet, we got the, he's got the Lion skin too with the stupid eyeball on his head. Great. It looks like Empire are doing exactly the same. Going to run their defensive trialing. Nix is the farmer with Silencer. And the Leshrac as the supports. Mid lane going to be Queen of Pain. And finally off lane will be the Dark Seer. So Scandal probably going to be relatively safe begins. in this bottom lane. Unless we see uh, Ix Mike get a point into that mana, drain, or mana leak early. Not really going to be able to kill this Darkseer. Earthspike, not the best stun for trying to stop a Darkseer once he's surged and running away. And of course, Hex doesn't actually slow you down when you have a haste Double ability. Damage. So he can just continue running. 
In the meantime, Nature's Prophet, probably not going to feel particularly safe here. He's already trying to steal this creep wave. Actually, just going to block it, looks like. Not even trying to steal the creep wave. But does get there, manages to block the pull. And he's just going to head into the jungle now. Not even pretending, because that is a very dangerous lane for him to try and contest up there. They have a real stun. And uh, Golak, of course, can do quite a bit of damage on this sound. They're actually utilizing this double damage to just kill off a neutral creep camp here. So they get a little bit of farming experience on the sports, even though they do miss that initial spawn on this medium camp. Looks like Sandal going to abandon that offlane as well. Now that he sees he would be running into the defensive trial lane, doesn't want to deal with it, at least not until he gets another level. So he's just going to hang out in the jungle, at least hit level 2. And in fact, already has hit level 2. See if he hangs out any longer, or decides he can maybe head down there and try and get some farm that way. So he'll just be relevant in the lane, keep his tower safe, with the constant push that Iron Shell can really provide. Meantime, mid lane, a matchup that we're seeing more and more often as of late, Queen of Pain going up against Puck. Of course, Queen of Pain's kind of been in the minor competitive players for quite some time. Korok taking a lot of damage here Dyer's from Vigos, the right clicks. No fear whatsoever. Walking into the tower, dealing damage, no big deal. So he was able to get the best of the farm in these lanes. Both gonna, carries gonna have relatively uncontested farm for the time being. We'll see uh, if any either of the off layers actually head up there in the near future. Well, we're gonna go and steal that illusion rune up in the top rune spot. Just to deny it from Vigos mostly. Doesn't have his bottle quite yet. As he did choose to pick up a no talisman actually beforehand. Just getting that right click damage. Mostly concerned about his matchup in this mid lane, I guess, but he's he might be in for a little bit of trouble now as the smoking is coming out from these supports. We'll see if they're able to set something up on him. Again, they're gonna have to kinda rely on fluff to get this hex off. If they want to get the kill, Fluff running in, and Vigas going to be able to blink away. Dyer's bottom tower so, is under attack. failed smoke gank in the mid lane there from Team Liquid. Not particularly surprising, especially trying to just run straight in there into the Queen of Pain. You basically have to get that Hex off her right away and just hope to burst her down as <laughs> she's getting out of there alive. <laughs> and Vigas choosing to just Bottle Crow. Silent actually has made his way down this bottom lane in the last try. There's a lot of pressure coming out in the tower. Not really sure if TC, why TC is doing that. If he's relying on Shikuchi the last hit a bit and hitting creep waves. But uh, it does make this creep wa uh, the creeps very farmable for Silent on this last track. Right? Really anyone who wanted to come down here. And uh, since Scandal can just farm in the jungle relatively well on the Dark Seer, he can just sit there and... Let the last right go bottom, get some free levels of experience that he normally wouldn't be getting. Trying to disrupt that pull there, not going to really succeed, but this last hit one of the neutrals. Denies a little bit from Liquid Supports. Meantime mid lane, looks like Queen of Pain continue to get the best of the farm. It's right clicks, also hitting pretty hard. It looks like Bulba going to be able to snipe double that rune damage. off once again, this time a double damage rune. Radiance middle tower is under Doing attack. what he can, slowing his own farm down just a bit, but he's helping out his mid lane a lot. If Queen of Pain's getting these runes, Puck is in a lot of trouble. Already not having the best time in the mid lane. Down a couple last, about four last hits, about a creep wave. And also, not really coming out ahead in these right click fights, even though they both do quite a bit of damage, they both have a null tail has been picked up now. You guys taking some damage from the orb. Fluff now zoning silent out of this bottom lane in the last track. We'll see how much longer he stays down here. Even if he's getting mostly zoned out, it's probably as effective as pulling in the top attack. lane, splitting experience with the silencer that way. Because he is occasionally grabbing some XP and he's actually level four, which is pretty good for a support, as all the other sports in the game are level three. TC now harassing him back. And with that chakra magic, that's pretty worrisome. Level 6 Radiance Weaver does quite a bit of damage with Shikuchi as well as the Geminate attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Fluff hanging out right by the Dire Ancients. 
almost looking like Silent thought something was up, and he might get stunned up now. Getting hexed. Here comes the Earth Spike, gonna land, and the Shikuchi hits as well. The Illuminate not gonna catch, and the Surge will keep him safe, so Silent gonna be able to get away. Avoids that. Attempt to gank Fluff taking quite a bit of damage there. TC as well taking it. A lot of hits. No mana for the time lapse either. So needs to be slightly careful about that. In the meantime, now Nake's cutting off the creep wave in the top lane, putting some pressure of his own on a tower. And yeah, we'll see if anyone actually rotates up here to do anything Radiant's about it. Nature's Prophet, kind of the tower. ideal candidate to come up here and maybe summon some treants, try and lure the creep wave away, but it doesn't look like he's planning on it. In the meantime, Silence. looks like Goblock about to be in some trouble here. Has that haste rune though, and it looks like he's going away. First blood, going the way of Vigos with that sonic wave. Killing off the puck, and now Bulba in some trouble. He's slow, he's fragile, and he's got a Queen of Pain and a Silencer chasing him. So that's another kill, double kill now for Vigos. Fluff gonna get an Earth Spike on him. In the tower range, so he takes a little bit of harass there, but that's two kills, going the way of Empire. Both on this solo mid Queen of Pain, that's gonna give her quite a bit of momentum now. Heading on to the game, she's got her treads done, grabs a couple TP scrolls as well. So gonna start being able to move around, probably see her just head to the mid lane, at least for the time being. Maybe wait around for that ult to come back off cooldown, get some farm. But a lot of golden experience going her way, as well as some experience going the way of Goblock on this sound, so he's up to level 5 now. It's pretty good for him, he's actually passed the Leshrac in terms of levels now with those two kills. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Vigos returning to the mid lane. The top tier one did go down. Let's see who got the last hit. Lifestealer got it. Good job. Dyer's he got the last hit. Let me tell attack. the bottom tier one gonna go down as well. So, uh, Glyph gonna be used. Shouldn't be able to keep it safe. Just really being annoying. Maybe messes up the last hit. Nope, Dyer's Weaver gets it nonetheless. Silent trying to go for the deny, but just doesn't hit as hard or as quickly as the Weaver. We've already doing 102 damage. Pick up phase boots actually. Oh, know that we normally see phase boots coming out as Weaver. It does give him some good damage early on in the game. He's actually porting to this top lane now. Gonna be able to farm up this creep wave. So we'll stop blow your brain. Just picked up the Midas, getting closer to that armor. Gonna have it at a very very good time. Not finished boots yet though. We'll see what he ends up doing with it. IX Mike steals the rune from Vigos, and it looks like Vigos is not pleased. Dealing a lot of damage. Illuminate going to be channeling through as well now, but Vigos is going to be able to just blink away. Radiance middle tower is under attack. <laughs> Killing off Keeper Illusions now. Feeling a little spiteful. Meantime, Leshrac. Continue to get some farming experience in this bottom lane, but left alone now that Weaver has poured up to that top lane, feeling pretty safe. Also knows the Keeper Light was kind of derping around the jungle. Nowhere near him for the time being, so can farm. Pretty hard to go for a backstab. They'd have to smoke up as well. There is this ward right here. That would watch the run around. Through there. Nick's using his infest to kill off a creep. I'm not sure if he was actually harassed and need the help. But he does have the armlet done with that. So he's going to get that sent to him on the courier. We'll see how much more farm he wants to get. Or if Empire is going to start trying to take fights early on. I feel like they have a pretty decent amount of momentum. We can try and take a look at experience of gold. Just see how much experience is 4k in favor of Empire. Gold, about 3k. So, actually quite a substantial lead for 10 minutes in. It's basically like having a whole nother hero on your team. I'm going to see a pause come out from Scandal now. Looks like it's going to be completely inexplicable. I'm just lagging a little bit. So we can get back to it. Scandal now in the mid lane. going to drop an eye on Sean Vigas. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. In the meantime, Silent drops a ward. Not going to see the supports charging at him. Time to run, probably. At least get back a little bit. Not going to really be able to put the pressure on the tower that maybe he was planning on. Radiance middle tower Boy, Brain going to feel probably pretty safe up in this top lane now. That he does have that armlet up. 
Weaver, not going to be the best hero for trying to kill him off, but Silent, looks like Nature's Prophet is porting in on him, and he's going to be in some trouble. Going to drop the Split Earth on the trees, kills them off, but he needs to get somewhere safe if he wants to be able to teleport, and he can't continue juking around trees forever. Going to miss the Split Earth on the lion there. He's trying. He's trying, and in the meantime, supports here. Silence coming, come out from the global fluff and stuff. He's going to be the first casualty, and now he doesn't have a stun. Ix Mike going down as well. Queen of Pain going to get that pick off. Lion immediately buying back. Liquid's already er, Bulba's already dead. The ult coming out from Vigas going to get the kill on Puck. That's a four for one trade in favor of Empire. Weaver's here now as well. Going to be able to kill off the Silencer. TC taking a lot of harass from the Iron Shell, but we'll be able to get out alive. Ends up being a four for two trade. There is a buyback top from the line. Under and the only two that go down on the side of Empire are the two supports. It's with a triple kill actually Radiance going the way of Egos on the screen of page. So, again, a pretty big fight there for them to win. Silent just buying enough time, Radiance wandering around. Be able to get something done. Blow your brain, taking some harasser, just going to rage and walk away. Some harass coming out from Fluff Radiance and stuff, but no real way of killing him. Doesn't have, <laughs> didn't have enough mana to actually use all of his abilities in succession. You guys continue to farm in the mid lane. See what he wants to go for in this game, up to about 2,000 gold. Radiance Grab that blink dagger soon for the double blink. Of course, that would be absolutely crazy for him to pick that up. We'll More likely, he'll go for. Maybe an Orchid to be uh, particularly effective against both the Weaver and the Puck. That wouldn't particularly surprise me. You could also just grab a, an Ultimate Orb here and head straight for that side of the Vise. Both certainly effective options in this particular game. Wouldn't really expect to see BKB. We do see Queen of Pains from time to time pick up BKB as a pretty early item, but I don't really think it's necessarily in this game. But they're the pros. Blow trying to get some farm in this top lane as well as defend his tower. Gonna pull the creep boy back. He's getting hexed up now. Needs to. Oh, he's super dead. That finger of death coming out. Silent gonna port in. Trying to get anything he can done. Still alive. TC going for the kill. Gonna be able to get in with a joint attack. But TC in some trouble. Trying to go invisible. Is he gonna be able to get away with the Shikuchi? Getting chased down by Scandal. And with that global silence. Oh man, he's gonna be able to get out just barely. TC continuing to run. Scandal has eyes on him. In the meantime, Puck drops a dream coil in the back of the fight. Looks like TC is gonna go down. And Puck gonna be able to get out alive. Gets hit by the open wounds. Forced to a loser of away. Getting chased by Vigos, actually. On this Queen of Pain, does have enough mana to really go for this? And there's an Illuminate flying through as well. Vigos just gonna avoid it. Blink it down the cliff. Gonna get hit by an Earth Spike now. Might be in some trouble. Hex hitting as well, the illusor arm gonna just miss, and the oh, Illuminate gets the kill. So a pretty important pickoff for Liquid to pick up there on the Queen of Pain in the mid lane. Just getting a little bit too aggressive and trying to farm, blow your brain now comes in. Gonna get the open wins off Bubble, he's gonna get his ult off, but he is gonna die. Scandal getting the last hit. With some Iron Shell damage, I think the buyback from Queen of Pain. Sonic Wave only hitting on one, and it looks like he's not gonna get a kill with it either. getting hit by all the elites. Now getting chased, lost quite a bit of mana there. And that tower gonna go down the way of Leshrac with the Edict. He did choose to max both Edict and Split Earth. Not getting that lightning early. So, another tower going the way of Empire as well as some kills. They ended up trading around quite a bit. But it is going to be 5 to 10, the kill score now in favor of Team Empire. We can take another quick peek at the experience and gold graph, see what's going on there. 7,500 now, the experience. Lead for Team Empire and about the same in gold, so they are continuing to accumulate a lead. And a liquid. Kind of going to have to do something about this, otherwise, they're going to get into a phase of the game where Empire are pushing into their base very quickly with a rather aggressive lamp that can really fight them pretty well. 
Golak just hanging out in the mid lane actually picks up an urn on his silencer. Scandal running around has the mech done and supposed a ring of health picked up. It looks like he might be going for a vanguard. It's just trying to get tanky a pretty good sign that they're gonna go for a really heavy mid game push. Vanguard, not an item you pick up when you're playing going into the late game. It becomes pretty bad pretty quickly. Vigas in some trouble. This bottle can get silenced up, but the global sound's coming out, keeping him alive for the time being. Gonna pop an invis rune in his bottle as well as use a charge. Looks like Fluff and stuff gonna try and pour it out, but there is a split earth. That's gonna be his death. Queen Pain able to pick that off. Now Korok trying to run away. Has that orb up, needs to use it to get somewhere good. He's all the way in the back and not gonna be able to get him. Last word it does hit, but doesn't do enough damage. Scandal, I don't think, had vacuum, or maybe couldn't see. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Don't know, but Puck will be able to get away. Line does go down. In the meantime, Empire puts quite a bit of or uh, Liquid puts quite a bit of harass on the tier one tower in the mid lane. Empire gonna be forced to pour a hero in in the form of the Queen of Pain to keep it safe. We also finds a rather convenient regen rune up in the top river. All five heroes from Team Liquid hanging out near their small camp, actually, in the Radiant Jungle. Looks like they might want to do something. In the meantime, Empire going for Roshan. We'll see if anyone from Liquid even has an idea that this is going on. The site was removed. There was a sentry ward, and it looks like a Trant got to walk in here and spot it out. It's going to see that Roshan pretty close to dead already, but Liquid in a position where they can get here. Will they go for it? Is Empire going to try and force the fight? They're still in pretty good health if they want to go up on the high ground and take it. Korok going to drop an loser up. Not going to hit on much of anybody. And it looks like both teams are just going to keep feeling each other out. Bunch of treants sitting here on the high ground. Mostly being annoying. And now they look like they're going to be mostly farmed for Blowy Rain. Luna ain't going to fly through. Mobile awards is really all they're doing here. It looks like an Orchid going to be coming out from Lifestealer. And Queen of Pain going for the BKB, it looks like. Or possibly an Eggs. Eggs, probably a better call than BKB, but we'll see what she wants to go for. Maybe she's just super concerned about all of these abilities that lion has that she doesn't want to get hit by ever. Puck going to throw in a loser orb and there is also an illuminate. Global Silence going to be popped. I don't know that that was necessary. But actually the Radiant got the last hit on that Roshan. I think the Illuminate finished it off. So Liquid going to get the gold for the Rosh kill. Empire do get the Aegis however. And Lifestealer are getting pretty close to having that Orchid up, which should be a concern for several of the heroes on Liquid's lineup. Once again, the Puck and the Weaver. Weaver in particular, until he gets the Lincolns up, which does look like he's going for. Still kind of far off. You gotta be concerned about ever getting hit by that Orchid. You're not a particularly tanky hero. Almost always relying on Shikuchi as well as Time Lapse to uh, keep you alive. You guys farming in the mid lane up to almost 3k gold. Silence. Still just sitting on that ogre club. You're getting really close to BKB gold if that's what she wants to pick up. And it looks to be heading into the jungle to get just that. Yep, just gonna go for BKB. So wants to be able to maneuver in these team fights without taking the harass, go block. In a lot of trouble. Finger of death coming off on Fluff and stuff. Don't even know that it was necessary. But it was awesome. And uh silencer. Super dead in the main lane. All that's left of him is this pool of what is presumably blood. Korok getting hit by that orchid. Gonna pop a haste rune. A pretty convenient rune to have in that position. The only thing that might have be been better is illusion. 
or uh, invisibility, not illusion. Illusion would have been bad. So gonna be able to get away with it. Open wounds not enough to keep him in place when he's got a haste rune popped. And now they know that that orchid is up on the life stair, which is important knowledge to have. I'm not sure if they saw the oblivion staves on him, because he was mostly in Roshan and then the jungle. Reporting up to the dire jungle, no fear whatsoever of anyone being here. Gonna farm it up. Has my and Shadow Blade done, so he's starting to do pretty well. On his farm, at least. Catch it back up, being involved in the game. It's pressure coming on the tier 1 tower top once again, but it's gonna get pushed back by an Empire pretty easily, not even really having to commit too much there. They have a lot of heroes up here, over, so they might want to make something out of it. The only one not here at the moment is Quinn Payne, who has a TP scroll, can be involved if they want to try and take a fight in this top lane. Can also just roam around the tire or Radiant Jungle, trying to find one of these supports out. Like to keep her light, or possibly if he wants to go on Bulba in this mid lane, unfortunately Shadow Blade. Pretty good item when you don't have reveal. And as I say that, Figos gets a gem sent to him. So Shadow Blade's suddenly not a very good item, as there is reveal. <laughs> At least in terms of defense, of course, the attack speed, the damage, and the crit it gives out of the invis effect is pretty strong. Illuminate gonna fly through doesn't really hit on much of it. But the creep wave and kills off that creep very quickly, and that tower gonna go down. Catapult actually getting the last hit. Sh basically shredded Korok. Hanging out. They pop a smoke, and most of the heroes get revealed. So they're probably trying to figure out now where someone is. Just gonna be content Dyer's to walk away, it looks like. TC, gonna get away. You guys did port to the bottom lane along with Life Stealer, infested inside. Thinking about trying to gink that Weaver, but not gonna be successful for the moment. Pretty good duo for doing it, however, with the gem on the Queen of Pain as well as the Orchid on the Life Stealer. So if they uh, had spotted him out, even for a moment, he'd probably be dead. <laughs> and now four heroes from Liquid pushing back up this top lane. They lost their tip tier 2 tower. Now they want the revenge. They want to finally take down this tier 1. They should be able to get it. The Glyph is up and Empire are on Dyer's their way. Glyph going to be popped, but I still don't Dyer's think they're in position to be able to get there in the next couple seconds. So this tower probably going to go down. They could try to initiate Dyer's a fight on the back of the tower kill. Support's already porting out Korok. Trying to get away. There's the vacuum. And silence going to come out. And it's the death of Korok completely. TC trying to run away. And should be able to get away. They do end up popping that global ult, but they get the kill on the puck, which is a pretty decent kill to always have. Puck not having the game of his life, of course. Has the blink dagger, however. And Empire pushing down this top lane. Are they going to go and try and high ground it right now? They feel like they're pretty strong. They are all five heroes in the bottom lane. All doing pretty good on health. If you guys could use some mana. That's Queen Pain. Pipe going to be popped. They're going for it. Pipe going to keep that Illuminate from doing too much fluff. Going to get vacuumed in. He's taking a lot of damage. The mech going to keep him alive for the moment. He goes down. Scandal gets hit by the finger death. Still okay. Ix Mike now getting hit by a Nakes. He's dead. Buyback going to come out from him immediately. In the meantime, Bulba went with the split push. Was able to get the tier 2 in the bottom lane. He's just going to pop from Life Stealer. Drew Carl landing on a couple. And it looks like Vigos going to blink to his death. The silence hitting on TC is going to Manta. Be okay for the moment. Silent going to go down as well. Trying to do as much damage as he can. And TC in some trouble, but gonna be able to just get away. Scandal gonna go down. Gem is gonna be dropped on the ground. Go block. Now stuck in some trees. Gonna be his death as well. And Empire feeling like they maybe tried to fly a little too close to the sun there. Forcing that fight. Korok in some trouble. Should be going down. Blow your brain. Now that he's involved in this fight. No fear at all ever. Bulba, no mana at all. Can't even Shadow Blade. There's the Shadow Blade off cooldown. The stun comes out from Fluff and stuff as well. They're going up Blow Your Brain. He's going to have to Armlet Tackle, but he's a half frog for far too long. I've got the magic touch. He's got the magic touch, man. Look at this guy. He's got the magic touch. Going to be able to save his teammate's life as well as secure that kill on the Life Stealer. 
So definitely too aggressive coming out there from the Life Stealer, trying to chase Bulba without anything off cooldown. And doesn't really have a way to slow or disable him in any way, besides the open wounds which he already used on the Puck. Could have just gotten back, wanted to go for more, ends up losing his life, probably unnecessarily. So, Empire giving it a little bit of it back there in that top lane. It will do about half the HP to that tier 3 tower. Fortunately, uh, I think Blower Brain lost the Aegis a little bit more quickly than he was really thinking he was going to. Kind of just got bursted down. His teammates had taken quite a bit of damage from spells like Mirror Death coming out from Fluff and stuff, and other abilities like Illuminate and Leech's Prophet Ult. Does quite a bit of damage. Well, like a stolen level 10 on this sensor, so it's got the level 1 ultimate. Getting ever closer to that level 11. I haven't seen anything else. There's gotta be something. Ultimate Orb. Up on the Queen of Pain now. So we're probably gonna be seeing the Scythe of Ice coming out next. Bulba pouring directly into the Dire Jungle. What is he? Oh, the Courier Snipes! Boom! Dire's courier has been killed. Poor Drodo. I'll trade you a uh, Skeleton King Sword. Or no, a Juggernaut Flag. For a Marana Mount. <laughs> Everyone hanging out in this mid lane. Looks like I'm probably going to try and push into this tier 2. Should be relatively successful as well. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower has fallen. And that's issue gonna go down life steal really get the last hit. Super easy. He's got thirty five hundred gold. Probably wishes her his courier weren't dead. And Swears vengeance on Bulba and or the like. Silent hanging out in this top lane trying to get some farm. Has a Ghost Scepter and a Point Booster picked up on this last rack. Sitting quite tanky by comparison to most support last racks. Do almost as farmed as Puck. Which is a pretty good thing, all things considered. Puck, again, not having a great time. Really got kind of destroyed early on by Queen of Pain. As well as uh, some unfortunate ganks going his way. And now with this Orchid up on Lifestealer. It's been his death repeatedly. Vigos rotating all the way back to base, actually. And it's time for second Roshan. Life Stealer picks up a Desolator now. And I'm assuming he is in the Rosh Pit fight here. Loser of gonna fly through, spots out this Rosh attempt, the Illuminate gonna hit on Scandal, this is quite a bit of damage. TC. Gonna throw the swarm in there. Kind of annoying. I'm sure the Empire don't want to actually give up this Roche kill. This time Dyer actually get the last hit. Woo! Dyer's top tower. And killing off the swarm. In the meantime, Bulba gets another tower. That's split push from Nature's Prophet. Pretty brutal. Picks up his scythe of Vi's now. He's getting quite tanky. Quite farmed. It's thirteen hundred health. Pretty much way better than this puck who only has 900 and is super susceptible to just getting killed by orchid weaver picking up a bkb probably needs it the more ways he has to uh, break out of all of this silence the better for him vigas only 1700 gold away from the side of eyes of his own now still pretty surprised he got that bkb it didn't really seem to do a ton for him in that last fight in the top lane, and we'll see what Empire want to do now. They have that Aegis once again, so they're just going to push up it, and hopefully grab off Silence. the kill. In the meantime, it seems Silent getting picked off. thought he'd be safe. I thought he would be able to get away, so I wasn't looking over there, and then he gets picked off. 
Now Bubba in the mid lane gonna port. Last tier two, the focus, four team liquid. We can take a look at experience of gold while he's have a chance before the fight breaks out. 4k experience lead and only 2500 now the gold lead for Empire. We can see it slipping away. The graph revealing it. Blow your brain. In a lot of trouble. Needs to survive here. Gets it by fear of death. The mech and the pipe. Gonna keep it alive for the moment. Still going in. Fluff already gonna go down. Sonic wave hits on several heroes. Time left's gonna come out from the Weaver taking a lot of damage. Gonna get silenced up. Trying to run away. And the urn charge gonna pick him off from silencer. Woo! Close call. That's the death of Weaver. Does he have the buybacks? No. No buyback on Weaver, so down for another minute, and that's the sign. Empire pushing up this mid lane. Blur Brain getting healed up. Still has that Aegis, has the Desolator as well. Gonna be able to deal a lot of damage to this tower as well as remove that armor, so everything's hitting it harder. And Illuminate's coming out from Keeper Light, trying to stop this push as long as possible. They need to stay alive. They need to keep this Tier 3 tower alive long enough for Weaver to get respawned. Has the BKB picked up now? Another Illuminate coming through. Silent showing up as well now. Gonna drop this but it Illuminate coming through once again. Blurry Brain taking quite a bit of damage. Pipe is repopped. Gonna keep the creep wave alive this time. The tier 3 is down. Can they kill the Rex? Korok gonna be able to deal some magic damage there. With the blink as well as the nukes. Bulba gonna sheepstick blow up. And they're not actually even gonna kill him, which is kinda surprising. Now the global sign's coming out. Bulba, the first target, the fluff gonna go down. Bulba able to shadow blade away, so the life for the moment. The BKB does get popped by Vigos. Just keeping it alive, and the barracks gonna go down. And it looks like with that Empire f happy to back off. Blue Brain needs to. There we go. Gonna go down. Actually, rages just before dying. Uh, not the ideal timing, but. Gonna be able to get the get away nonetheless, especially with the lion down. It's kind of hard for Team Liquid to uh, really hold him in place. Vitality was to pick the Bioelectric, so he's going for that Bloodstone. Kind of far off still. Unless he's uh, picked something up that I haven't seen. Doesn't look like it. It's probably gonna be a while, but he is getting the tanky parts of it. Keeps him alive. Keeps him tanky in these fights trying to get as much magic damage put out there, especially as he has some points in that Pulse Nova now. Choosing to get stats over Lightning Storm. I think this is kind of a standard Lightning Strike build. You either end up getting Lightning Storm early or you typically just don't get it at all. Just getting tanky, a little bit more mana, as max mana as well as mana regen. Typically more useful to be able to get Pulse Nova because that's where your real damage is coming from anyways. Later in the game. Double invis, blow your brain. You strayed too far, and he dies. A lot of spells being used there, but only Dream Coil going to be on cooldown for any amount of time, so not going to be too much of a commitment. And a pretty good pick off to have. They keep finding blow your brain out with that. <laughs> And everyone's just wandering around, not getting too much done yet. Looks like Empire have three in the mid lane, trying to defend this tier two tower. It's taking quite a bit of rest, and Luna gonna fly through, killing off most of that creep wave. Trying to stop this tower kill, and Nature's Prop gonna get the last hit. So Bubble getting all the tower kills this game. Up to 2200 gold beyond the Crystalis that he's picked up, so Daedalus in his future. Probably not gonna just straight up buy it, wants to keep buyback, I'm sure. Because if he goes down and doesn't have buyback, it could just be game over with the way Empire are pushing up these lanes. And they already have a lane down, which is always a concern. Spider coming out from Silent, trying to stall up this creep push for as long as possible. It's be moderately concerned. Still have a Blink Dagger yet? Yep, Blink Dagger is picked up on light. So it's a pretty good initiation range as well. Just blink in, toss that hex up, and that would be the death of Silent. With no backup. 
All five heroes from Empire are heading in a line towards the mid lane. See where they end up going if they're just trying to put some pressure towards the mid lane and end up rotating around. We're really hoping to find a pig off somewhere, but it doesn't look like they're actually going to spot one out. Bubble porting up to the top lane. Uh, with some help from TC, it looks like they're going to try and pressure the tier 3 top. And they should be moderately successful as Empire have all five heroes in this mid lane lion porting back to base. We'll see how long it is before TC decides to He's getting recalled. So we'll still have the TB off cooldown and they're killing the tier 3. The tier 3 top already going to go down. There is no glyph. They're going into the melee racks trying to deal as much damage as possible. Blur Brain going to get hexed up once again. He's back to full HP or back out of it. Going to get silenced up and he goes down. And this Queen of Pain is just not doing really what she needs to, it seems like. Has the BKB, but she isn't doing the damage. Able to get the kill on Puck eventually. And Empire is just going to be forced back once again, losing their Lifestealer. Getting to the point where it feels like Lifestealer might need a BKB just to be able to survive. So he doesn't have to worry about popping that Rage in response to all of the magic immune. Go Rage, BKB Rage. But he's gonna go down once again. They do get the tier three tower in the top lane as well as the range racks in the mid lane. So able to do some damage to the base. The melee racks you know, took some da incidental damage. It's gonna regen most of it up by the next time there's any heroes from Empire actually approaching this base, unless they respawn and run straight there. But getting the tier three down definitely a moderately big deal. We have a four staff up on Keeper of Light now. Taking a look at experience of gold, 5k the gold lead for Empire. It's kind of fluctuating back and forth, and 5k the experience lead. It's just still not as much as it was early on in the game, and of course, that sort of difference is a lot less relevant 37 minutes in than it is 10 minutes in. Vigas has another gem picked up, has the scythe advice, of course, now as well. Up to 2,500 gold behind it. Let's see what he goes for next. Plate mail picked up from Darkseer. As well as an Aghanim Scepter. I don't even think I've seen the wall come out from Scandal. Uh, or at least not like super effective walls. Weaver has a Demon Edge picked up. Let's see if it goes for a Daedalus or an MKB in this particular game. It looks like Empire are rotating up towards the top melee racks again. Just gonna push in mid, make sure the back door region's off, and then go for it. Pipe gonna get popped. Sure that that creep wave will be able to make it in the ult coming through from the Nature's Prophet. And it looks like the wall and the vacuum gonna be there. Bubble taking a lot of damage. Has that BKB up, so he's gonna survive for the moment. TC with his BKB pops as well. Getting in a slap fight. Taking some damage, but he's gonna be able to back off. The ult comes out from Silent now. Bubble able to get a kill on Queen of Pain, chasing a little too far, I think. And it looks like, oh, the finger of death gonna hit. On Lifesteal, he's going down silent, getting chased, he's gonna be in trouble as well, and Scandal now, trapped in trees, Bubble just did too much damage, that's gonna be a full team wipe in favor of Team Liquid, buybacks did come out from both sides, I believe, the Keeper Light bought back, as well as the Queen of Pain. But that's the kind of fight Empire can't Radiant's afford to lose. And I'm not sure really what went wrong for v Vigos died really near the fountain. Now he's getting picked off again. Bulba doing way too much damage. Gonna be able to survive has that regen rune as well. So might be able to re-engage a little bit more early than Bulba's expecting. We'll see if that has any effect here. Like Vigos just gonna choose to uh, kill off that catapult. Make sure that this push is as weak as possible. And Roshan gonna respawn, so this is probably where we're gonna see the next big fight, and it feeling like Liquid. We're in a position where they're doing a little bit better, they're a little bit stronger in these fights. We'll see if Empire can really try and force something to happen, make it, take a big fight. Maybe just use their abilities a little bit more efficiently than they have been. Go block, getting picked off. Uh, not the way to start it. Definitely not the way to start. He's going down. 
B Goss in some trouble as well. The sound's gonna land. Uh, Bubbly's taking a lot of damage. Gonna pop the BKB. Should be able to just get out fine. TC in the back of the fight with his BKB popped as well. The slow gonna come out on IX Mike. It's gonna be his death, it looks like. Blur Brain getting hexed up as well as getting hit by the finger of death. It looks like it's gonna be his death instead. Too much crowd control coming out in him. And Surge gonna come off and silent keeping him alive for the moment. Loser of gonna go and uh, Yule Scepter out from Korok gonna be his death. It looks like Scandal will be able to get away. Chasing him down. Boba gonna get killed off by his own illusion. I do not care to see that dark gray place again. Pull roots and run. I'm not certain that was on accident. I'm kind of feeling that it might have been on purpose. So you could just get a full heal and come back right away. As he did have buyback, but. Not sure, and that's gonna be made at least Rex in the mid lane, it looks like. Oh. Vigas gonna pop the Sonic Wave, doesn't really land on any of the fluff and stuff. They all comes out from Goblock, in the meantime, TC's already down, Queen of Pain able to pick it off. And Empire on the back foot, looks like they're going down here. Scandal gonna get hit by an Earth Spike. Kevin is mana drains and Illuminate. Or actually, Nature's Prophet just auto attacks and they're finishing off. Yule's gonna set up that kill on Goblock. It looks like TC gonna be able to get it. Scandal, Boy's back in the back of the fight, trying to do whatever he can, but he's gonna go down once again. And melee racks are gonna be gone here. And Goblock gonna call GG. Empire just throwing their way their lead in kind of a pub style ending to that game. Where they kept just running in one at a time, getting killed off. And it's Liquid gonna take it. It's not the first time we've seen a game where that really happens. You uh, kind of watch and you see as the enemy team is just really coming at your barracks. They're able to get one down, you lose some faith, but they keep dying. Throwing their f lives away, trying to kill off the buildings, and then you stall out once. And suddenly, you're in a really good position. And Liquid, with heroes like Nature's Prophet, can really capitalize on that position. They were constantly being able to take at least some sort of trade, not the best trades always. Like when they lost, you know, like a tier 2 tower and they took a tier 1, or they were able to get this one down when Dyer's they were losing their tier 3. Not the fallen. ideal trades, but they kept them in the game. Radiant and in the end, that's all they needed because they ended up winning the game. Did you know you could do this? You could click on the minimap while the game is going on? How cool is that? Well, that's something new every day, man. Alright, but that's going to do it for game one. A liquid do take it in 42 minutes, so somewhat long game. But we will be back momentarily for the second game. We'll see if Empire can tie the series up or if they're going to go down, drop to that loser's bracket in the D uh, Russian Dota 2 League. Thanks for coming and be right back.